do green chemicals need to be disclosed on an MSDS? Welcome to another installment of NextReg on Compliance. My name is Mike Moffat. I'm the Director of Communications here at NextReg. Recently, uh, one of our consultants was authoring an MSDS for a green cleaning product, specifically an industrial use or professional use uh, green cleaning product. So we authored the MSDS, I believe it was for uh, both US and Canada, and we had to disclose a couple of the chemicals on the MSDS. And the client thought this was a little strange. She says, okay, well, this is a, a green uh, product. You know, this is a sort of safe to use type, uh, environmentally friendly product. Why are there any uh, chemicals being disclosed? Very, very good question. So normally in most jurisdictions, whether it be Canada, US, or the EU, uh, we disclose hazardous components you know, hazardous being a bit different in the different legislations, but the basic rule of thumb is if the legislation says it's hazardous, you disclo uh, disclose that uh, component if it's over the disclosure limit, whether that be 0.1 or, or 1%. So that's the basic rule of thumb in most legislation. Okay, so now we have to consider, okay, well, what does it mean to be green? What does it mean to say a particular chemical is, is green? And uh, what does this suggest for disclosure? The problem is um, this sort of definition of green is used somewhat loosely and it can mean a few different things. But really almost no matter what definition you use, you still may have to disclose those green chemicals on your MSDS, or at least some of those green chemicals. So the first potential definition we hear quite a bit is that what we mean by green is that it's non-toxic. It's non-toxic to people, it's non-toxic to the environment. This is a very commonly used um, phrase or commonly used definition of green. Okay, but remember that non-toxic does not mean non-hazardous and we disclose uh, components on the MSDS when they're non-hazardous. So we can have all kinds of hazards that aren't toxicity-based hazards. So I've listed four here. We could have a compressed gas, uh, something that's flammable, something that's combustible, something that's an oxidizer. None of these are really have anything to do with toxicity, but they're still hazards. So as such, if we have a component that has one of these hazards over the and the component is over the disclosure limit, we would need to list it on the MSDS. So in this case, yes, your green chemical may need to be listed on the MSDS. Another definition we hear quite a bit about uh, regarding green is really green meaning greener. And the idea is that um, it's greener than the alternative. So if we're looking at some solvent that has some properties, there may be another chemical that we say, okay, well, we consider this a green chemical because it acts in the same way as that solvent, but it's friendlier to the environment or it's less toxic or what have you. So green is being used instead of an absolute sense in definition one, it's being used in a relative sense. So we would say, okay, well then this is relatively less toxic. Well, that wouldn't mean that you know this, this component is non-toxic, just that it's less toxic. So clearly, you know, it could fall in one of these definitions or this chemical could be uh, considered uh, toxic, fall under one of the toxic definitions of hazard. So in this case, if we're using definition two, there's going to be all kinds of components that we're going to need to disclose on the MSDS, because they still could be toxic, they're just less toxic than the alternatives. A third definition that I see quite a bit is that what we mean by green is a chemical that has one or more what we call green properties. So what are these green properties? If we look at the Handbook of Green Chemistry, which I, I believe is now in the second edition, possibly the third, it lists about 18 or 19 different properties of, of green chemicals. It includes things like biodegradable, recyclable, low global warming, non-carcinogenic, but a chemical doesn't have to have all 19 of these properties. So you could get something that was um, biodegradable and recyclable, but it could still be a skin irritant. It could still be an eye irritant. It still could be combustible or an oxidizer. One of the interesting things we see a lot, particularly with this, so this is a chemical that's either VOC compliant, low VOC, and no VOC. Well, it turns out a lot of 
alternative chemicals that or components that could be used that are low VOC or no VOC tend to be flammable. So there tends to be when we're, we're doing a reformulation for a client because we're trying to meet some VOC regulation, there's often a trade-off that we have to take out a component that's high VOC but low flammability or not flammable and replace it with a component that is a lower or no VOC but is flammable. So there's oftentimes a VOC versus flammability trade-off. So like economists like to say, often there's no free lunch here. That you know, getting, getting something down in one area, you know, makes something more hazardous in another area. So we can see this trade-off that, you know, sure we're using a green chemical because it's low VOC or no VOC, but we've increased the flammability of the mixture. But finally, you'll note that one of the 19 or so properties is in fact non-hazardous. Now, if this definition of non-hazardous is the same as the definition up here of hazard or non-hazardous, then in that sense, your chemical would not be, need to be disclosed on the MSDS. So only if you take a really strict definition of green to mean completely non-hazardous, then uh, your component would not need to appear uh, on, uh, listed on the MSDS. But if you use any other definition, you're going to get some green chemicals that will need to be disclosed on the MSDS because they have some hazard, um, whether it be flammability, combustibility, or because the definition of green just means less toxic, not non-toxic. So I hope you find this um, video series useful. Um, we would love to answer some of your questions in future videos. So if you do have any questions, please send them my way to info, info at nextreg.com. Take care. This presentation and all the information contained herein is not intended to replace or be used in place of the judgment of a qualified regulatory compliance professional. Regulations and interpretations of regulations can change rapidly, so please consult a qualified regulatory compliance professional before starting any project.